Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 7th, 2022, around 9 30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a new tropical cyclone that could be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days. Where will it head and how strong will it get? Well, let's go to it and jump straight into everything. Taking a look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that not much is actually occurring across the basin today, but we do have a few interesting things starting to occur. First of all, we have a tropical wave in the eastern part of the main development region right now that has merged off the coast of Africa earlier this morning in the overnight hours, and this will be traversing the MDR over the next several days as it generally heads towards the west-northwest here. Some additional development of this system is possible, and this could become a tropical cyclone in the next few days as it traverses the MDR. So far today, we have a system in the main development region with a 40% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone over the next couple of days. We can see here on the tropical weather outlook from 8 a.m. this morning that we do have this wave marked over the coast of Africa now. This has now emerged and is just now to the southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands. This is expected to be traversing the main development region over the next couple of days where some additional development is still possible and development chances have therefore increased to about 40% over the next five days. Again, we still have a long ways to watch this in terms of any potential impacts down the road. This seems like a system that could have a higher chance of recurving out to sea, which is certainly some good news, but obviously we still have to watch this because this still could um, you know, find its way near Bermuda or some other place. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on this, but right now the model trends have been for this to be carried on out to sea, but that's within the long range pattern and the long range is still very uncertain at this time. But what we do know is that we could have a storm developing here within the next about four to five days. Taking a look here at the model data forecast, this is the GFS forecast, the 06E run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. We're looking at the 850 millibar vorticity, so the spin in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet off the ground. What we notice here is that we have a few interesting things starting to occur on the GFS forecast today. First of all, we do have this tropical wave embedded within the monsoon trough. This will be generally heading off towards the west or northwest over the next couple of days. This is not the wave that is expected to develop what we can actually see though is the little vorticity signature associated with the tropical wave right here. This is the wave that we'll be watching to the southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands and this will be moving generally west or northwest over the next couple of days. And here on the GFS forecast we can see how quickly it, things start to come together. Within just about a two day period we actually are starting to have a bona fide tropical cyclone look here on the GFS uh, forecast. So this is by about 2 a.m. on Tuesday. And we have a storm down here south of the Cabo Verde Islands or to the southwest of the islands now that is on its way to becoming a tropical cyclone. And on this particular run of the GFS, this actually makes it a hurricane in the MDR before kind of getting squashed by some of the dry air to the north. But we can see here that the model forecast is painting a tropical storm. But let's look at some of the other guidance here. So first of all, we'll look at the upper level wind environment. Now, the pattern isn't all that terrible, at least for the next couple of days. There actually is a fair amount of outflow generation, and that will certainly help to lower the pressures at the surface and create mass affluence aloft. So it is certainly some good news. But we notice what's actually occurring out here across the subtropical Atlantic here. We notice that we have this bowling ball low and we just have a, a belt of westerly winds here. And that's not really good because, again, we have west to east winds. And that's going against the way that the storm is going to be heading. And we actually notice here that uh, by the particular time we start to get the GFS forecast that basically just brings the system into the shear. And it's pretty unfavorable at that time. Now, the upper level uh, moist environment here, the, the moisture, isn't really all that terrible, at least for the next couple of days. There actually is a bout of pretty favorable moisture. But as soon as this starts to leave the monsoon trough, this begins to encounter that dry, stable air caused by wave breaking patterns in the upper subtropics here that sends all this dry air southward. And what this is doing is then getting entrained into the circulation and not really allowing it to strengthen much. And eventually a combination of sheer and dry air eventually makes this thing a dead cyclone here sometime by the 13th of August, according to the GFS. 
Now, the European forecast here, on the other hand, is not really so enthused by this. And uh, we know that, you know, these two models have been competing, really, but the, the GFS is kind of the, the more bullish of the two right now. And uh, right now we can see that the euro just doesn't show a single thing out here and actually has this getting caught up and eventually does try to redevelop some type of circulation out in the subtropical Atlantic. And we notice that, again, the precipital water forecast is expected to be pretty good, at least for the next couple of days, and then eventually get kind of gets caught up in that dry, stable air to the north. So not really going to be seeing super favorable conditions once this begins to significantly leave the intertropical convergence zone. But where will this thing be heading? Well, for that, let's take a look here at the upper level height anomalies here. This is the 500 millibar pattern. It's about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And what we notice is that right now we're kind of dealing with some general troughing up in the high latitudes here. And this is basically allowing for a weakness and potentially a system that would easily recurve out to sea. Now, that is certainly some good news. Obviously, we don't want to see any storms impact land. Uh, but obviously, this general pattern remains for several weeks, in fact. Here, you can actually see eventually uh, by hour 162, we still have this general troughiness in the East Atlantic. That's a pretty favorable setup for something to try to kind of sneak its way on out to sea between this ridge and this trough over here. And eventually, though, ridging does build back in by the end of the forecast period around August 22nd. Now, obviously, our storm will be long gone by that point. But this is starting to show the signs of general troughiness across the basin and kind of getting ready for that wave train to emerge off the coast of Africa and eventually produce multiple tropical cyclones, probably over the next couple of weeks. So we're going to have a kind of a lot on our eyes. But again, right now, I'm not really generally concerned. The bottom line is this tropical wave over here near the coast of Africa could go on to become a tropical depression or storm over the next couple of days. No threats to the islands or any uh, of land for that matter at this time. All right. Now, time to turn our attention to severe weather today, where we do have a few risks for severe storms today. So let's go ahead and jump straight into that as well. We do have a marginal risk for severe storms today, generally across portions of the Midwest here, really from about Iowa, about through La Crosse, south of Minneapolis, and to the northeast of Omaha, Nebraska. Today, the main threats with this Midwest U.S. threat will be from damaging straight line winds and the potential for large hail. No tornado threat exists with that. There also is a severe weather threat today across portions of the southwest U.S. and including Denver, Colorado today. We do have a marginal risk for severe storms today out across portions of the Colorado Rockies, including Denver, Colorado, and to the northeast of Grand Junction. And today's threat does go to include the potential for an isolated tornado or two. We can see here that the tornado probability is only a 2%, so a very low end tornado risk today, but it does go to include places like Denver, Colorado, and then to the Colorado and Kansas state border here. So we will have to watch this for an isolated tornado or two. These will not be long track, long lived tornadoes, but these weaker land spot type tornadoes, but they can still do some significant damage because they move very slowly. We also do have a risk for severe storms today across portions of the desert southwest, including places like Tucson, Arizona, and just to the south of Flagstaff. So we're really going to have to watch this area again. The main threats will be these downburst winds similar to Florida afternoons, damaging winds, and some potential for large hail will be possible with those systems as well. So bottom line, there is a chance for tropical development over the next couple of days across portions of the main development region, but no threat to land at this point, so we will continue to monitor everything. But with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. There will not be a video tomorrow, but I will talk to you guys again some more on Tuesday.